I'm Pastor Warren, a minister at uh, Greenford Baptist Church. Have one of these random thoughts today. What would I do if Jesus entered into the room right now? Just, just momentarily forget for a minute that, 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 that the Lord is omnipresent, i.e. everywhere all the time. But let's just, just for a moment believe and imagine the idea that Jesus physically walked into my room or your room where you are right now. What would I do? Well, I suppose firstly for me it would depend upon how he appears. If he came in sort of in sort of what I call normal human form, I wouldn't have a clue who he is. So unless he's got some sort of badge, name badge that says, you know, Lord Jesus, saviour of the world, your personal saviour. Unless he had something like, oh, no, no, I wouldn't have a clue who he was. I'd take one look and go, and you are who? Or if he comes in in, in Revelation where his sort of eyes are, are blazing just like fire and he's got a double-edged sword and a golden sash, I'd pretty much at this point go, oh, yeah, that's Jesus. Hit the floor, prostrate absolutely terrified and wondering why he's in the room. Taking either of those scenarios, eventually I would uh, probably calm down and then eventually sit there and think to myself, why are you here? And he'll carry on standing there, smiling away. And then eventually I'll run through a whole bunch of thinking, why are you here? Is that it? Is my time up? Have I... Have I that's it, it's all over. Uh, I suppose my next thing for me would be, probably the first thing really would be, what have I done wrong? Wrong impression of Jesus, by the way. If that's your first thought, what have I done wrong? Wrong impression of Jesus. Because we've all done things wrong, but that's not the reason he came. Anyway. These wild thoughts run through my head. And I suppose... Partly, after I'd be sitting there, I'd be thinking to myself, that old great proverb that we know so well, Jesus is coming back, better look busy. So I'd probably, I'll be sitting there frantic, going, oh, I better look busy. Have I done enough? Have I done enough? Have I done enough? Oh, oh, yes, seriously, I didn't have my feet up on the desk. Really, honestly, Jesus, I was busy, busy, busy. you would do if he was here I suppose then eventually I might actually get round to asking him saying and you're here why and then I'm thinking why am I asking this question please take a seat please take a seat can I get you a cup of tea can I make you some coffee would you like apple juice or something and eventually I think Jesus would respond and he would Thank for the seat. Maybe take the seat. I probably would then make him whatever he wanted to drink. Wanting and make myself one. Frantically run to the kitchen. Maybe making the tea thinking, I want to get this perfect. I've got to get this perfect. How does he like it done? Does he like it weak? Does he like it medium? Does he like it what strong? Does he want the spoon almost standing up? I didn't ask him. Does he take sugar? Oh my goodness me. What do I do? I've got no biscuits. Ha, oh, ah, me, ah, nothing to give him. And eventually, coming in, going high, and he's sitting there quite calmly, says thank you. And then I'm thinking, do I sit down, stand on the ceremony, kneel before him? What do I do? Am I like a Martha or am I like a Mary? What do I do? And I'm sure Jesus will be very good at putting me at my ease and saying, Warren, sit down. Please, you're making the room look uncomfortable. I ain't making it uncomfortable. You're here. Oh, okay, I'll sit down. What can I do for you, Jesus? It's normally the first thing that we all say. I get a funny feeling that Jesus would turn around and say, No, what can I do? For you. I think I'll be stumped. Or would I? 
I've always had 10 ton of questions that I've always wanted to ask. And it's always many of those things I, I would say, when I finished on this earth and I mean with the Lord, I think I would go, why? And I suppose I'd start with something like, why crabs? Could you please explain to me the usefulness of wasps? Those sort of random questions. Why couldn't space travel be easier? Why didn't you give us wings? Those sort of ridiculous questions, really. So my mind would be blank, and then I go, probably, I actually don't know what you can do for me. Because I know anything I ask will be insignificant in comparison to what you could do. So actually, Jesus, can I ask you what you want to do for me? I know at this point, it would be vastly, significantly more than I could possibly understand, comprehend or imagine. But it'd be exciting. It would be a bit of a crazy journey. It would probably be, as he's explaining it, I'm going, but how's that going to happen? Oh, no, but I've got to change here. Oh, but I don't think I'm good enough for that. Oh, my life. Did you see what I was thinking only yesterday? And he's going, yes. But I see the potential. I see what I can do in you and through you and for you and for those all around you. So what would you do if Jesus entered your room right now, out of the blue? Jesus said, look, I stand at the door and knock, and if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we'll share a meal together as friends. I like that verse. You take that for a moment. I stand at the door and knock. What's the first thing you do when you hear a knock on the door? It's normally, who's that? Mind you, at my office, somebody knocks on the door and I want them to come in. I just say, come in. I've not even heard who it is. But they come in. Come in and I ask them to sit down and... See, with Jesus, he's saying, look, you're going to hear me voice. You're going to then open and respond and I'll come in and we'll have a meal together and we'll sit and we'll chat. That's what I'll do. So I think when Jesus comes into a room, he comes in just to sit and have a chat. Problem is, I think we go through a whole cycle of processing of I don't really think I can spend time with Jesus right now because I'm too busy. I've got this to do, that to do, this to do. Or we might turn around and say, I can't really spend time with Jesus because I did this wrong, did that wrong. Do you know what thought I had yesterday? And he's going, yes, I do. But I still want to sit and have that chat. Just chat away the day. Let me tell you what's going on. I want to hear you. and You're going to want to hear me. So ask yourself the question, what would you do if Jesus entered the room today? Now, for those of us who know really our real, get our real theology, Jesus has already entered the room because if you've invited him, him into your life, he's in the room already, all the time. We just tend to forget that he's in the room already, all of the time. And he's ready just for a chat. For those of us that might have heard the door knock, might have heard his voice saying, it's me, Jesus. We haven't actually said, come in. He's still standing at the door, knocking saying, it's me, Jesus. In his head, he's going, I want to come in for a chat. Trust me, it's going to be the best conversation you've ever had in your life. Invite him in. 
for those of us who have invited in, him in before, I think maybe we might have forgotten how good those conversations really are. Oh, we've never had that truly constant, in-depth conversation. I suppose maybe because we're expecting him to bash us over the head with a stick to say how bad we are. He actually doesn't do that. He actually points out all the good stuff. And in the process of pointing out the good stuff and saying, and this is stuff that I can do with you and where I want to you, you actually see what you're already doing. Think, actually, that's wrong. I need to change that so I can do that. And you're going to want to do that because your conversation with Jesus has inspired you, has inspired you to want to do it and to stop doing the thing you know you shouldn't be doing. See, when Jesus enters the room, he doesn't expect to find you busy. He expects to find you ready for a chat. Have a cup of tea with Jesus. Invite him into the room. Sit down with him in the chair. And have a conversation. God bless to you.